Snapchat fam, I got something to say, and you're going to want to watch, because it's going to be good. I guarantee it. Snapchat fam, I hate rants. And the reason why I hate rants is because I sound angry, and I am not an angry person. I want to preface by saying that I am not paid by Snapchat. I am simply a fan of the product. I'm a fan of the product because I put in the time in using it, three years to be exact, and it's actually resuscitated my personal brand. And to be very clear, what I mean by that comment is that last year, when I went to go work for LinkedIn, my personal brand fell off the map. So through Snapchat, I've been able to now build a new network. I've met a lot of you for the first time, and my engagement here is much higher than any other platform. But the halo effect of being on Snapchat has been that I've been able to connect with others here in a more intimate manner than on Facebook or Twitter before. Now, while I'm a fan of the product, my job is not to help you monetize Snapchat at all. In fact, my job is working for a corporation leading social media for them because I am a brand marketer. So using this product gives me insight that I can relay back to them. My passion, however, is in teaching. Teaching folks like yourself how to use this platform. So because I'm passionate about the product, because I've personally seen results, because I've studied this for several years now, I want to teach you about it. So there's a big difference, my friends, between talking and teaching. Talking is just jumping on and sharing with you guys a lot of the fun stuff that I happen to do. Teaching, though, is a combination of using this as a medium to help you apply this in your business or going to a conference and doing the same. So I'm going to walk you through a timeline of events. I hope you'll stick here and listen, but I'm also going to teach you how to scale Snapchat, at least how I would do it. There are three types of marketers on social media. Just three. They are early adopters and pioneers slash practitioners that come on these platforms early, they figure it out and then they teach others. They're the ones that are more passive users that wanna learn how to use these technologies. They join or they sit on the sidelines, but they listen. And then there are the ones that are party crashers that come to the party quickly, but then they leave the party as quickly as they came. If you see where I'm going with this, hopefully you're either one or two because you're either all in or you're on the outside looking in and wanting to learn more. Because friends, our jobs as marketers are not to solve the world's problems. It's not how to take this and to make it what we want it to be. On the contrary, our jobs as marketers is using technology to connect our brands with people on the mediums in which they're using to engage. Too often I hear marketers saying, oh, I'm not gonna be on Snapchat. My brand's not going to be on Snapchat. There's no value in Snapchat. Why? Then why the hell are you on Facebook? Why are you on Instagram? Why are you on Twitter? Why are you on Pinterest? There's a reason why social media platforms are successful for certain brands, not all brands. That's because they're speaking to their audience natively on a platform in which their community, their audience is engaging. And let me tell you folks, it's not everywhere. I personally am not on Pinterest. Never had been. I don't even get how Pinterest works. But yet, there are brands like Nordstrom's that see a lot of success on Pinterest. Because they know, based on data and usage, that Pinterest over-indexes amongst female consumers. So let's enter Snapchat. Over the last two weeks, I've seen so many people just ripping Snapchat apart. And they use all the prototypical buzzwords that come along with social media talk, like ROI and scale, analytics, measurement. What really got me hot was at this iMedia Summit two weeks ago, I was talking with a very senior marketer for a very high profile company. So he looks at me in my face and tells me that his company, which is a major, major retailer, will never be on Snapchat. Which folks, is a very bold statement. Because if you work in an industry where your average basket size is $9, but yet you say you're never going to be on Snapchat? To me, that says you really don't know your audience that well, 
Because if you work for a retailer whose average basket size is $9, that says to me, you probably have a lot of younger people shopping with you. Or you have a lot of people shopping with you that consume content on mobile devices. Because again, I've worked in retail. I've done a lot of Nielsen research over the years. I'm going to throw it out there. Rich people tend to under-index in social, mobile, and digital consumption. So anyways, we're at this conference. The dude has a captivated audience of marketers and literally has a slide up on the screen just shitting all over Snapchat. I couldn't help but think to myself, wow, this guy has everything completely twisted and he's obviously never spent time on the platform to get how it works. So at that same conference, I also met and spoke with dozens of marketers that are over the moon excited about Snapchat. And why are they over the moon excited about Snapchat? Let's analyze that for a moment, shall we? Reach is an all time low, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, let's face it friends, you gotta pay to play in the sandbox. Snapchat over indexes amongst millennials age 13 to 34. This demographic is going to outspend baby boomers by 2017. 60% of smartphone users who are millennials in the US are on Snapchat, 60%. Mobile video consumption is where it's at. Micro moments, in fact, over 6 billion videos are viewed daily right here. So based on those three compelling reasons I just gave you, if you are not interested, Stop right here. Now, let's fast forward from the iMedia conference and let's talk about a Forbes article that was just published two days ago. The headline reads, Snapchat is a marketing loser and I have the data to prove it. Now look, Snapchat is not for everybody. It really isn't. In fact, it's not for most companies, businesses, or brands. And the reason why I loudly say that is because if you are not going to go all in and develop a strategy, it starts with your why, it starts with your audience, it's just not going to work. I said this in my 10 Keys to Social Media Success video last week. Social media can be a complete waste of time if you don't have a strategy to start with. However, to rule something out and call it a marketing loser without actually having tangible facts, that's where I draw the line. I could easily say Twitter is a losing value proposition. I could easily say Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, it's all a losing proposition. Because granted, if you are not putting in the time to build an audience, engage that audience and give them what they want, it's just not gonna work. Like I said, when I started this, our jobs as marketers are to connect our brands with people, specifically buyers. Now, if your buyers don't live on Snapchat, hey, out of sight, out of mind. Go where they are. You're not offending me at all. Like I said, I don't get paid to help people monetize Snapchat. My passion is in teaching how to use it. So, this article, the contributor provides five reasons why he feels that Snapchat's a marketing loser, and I am going to address each. The first thing he leads off with is confusing UI, which stands for user interface. He specifically says, who wants their message to disappear? Here's a reality check. Your content is only as relevant as your last post, regardless of the platform that it's on. People live in the now. Right now, in real time, people don't go back to see what you posted on Twitter a day ago, three days ago, a week ago. In fact, the reason why engagement over indexes on Snapchat is because of the psychology behind the platform. It forces you to come back and check. Tell me something. When was the last time that you went to the Facebook page or the Twitter account for your favorite brand, let's just say Nike, to see what they posted a month ago? Now tell me, if this is a platform in which content disappears after 24 hours, don't you think that creates a compelling reason for your community to keep coming back? That's one, check. Two, user interface. This is an easy platform to navigate around. I'll put it like this. Go to this website, snapchat.tips, and on there I teach you how to use the user interface for Snapchat. Bang. 
because let's face it, there's no ads popping up. There's nothing to click through. Easy peasy to get in and out, see content. Because let's keep it 100. Marketing isn't about me, the marketer, who's trying to get you to buy something. It's about you, the consumer. It's about connecting with you, building that relationship with you. Marketers want to dominate how marketing is had. But the reality is that the customer controls how marketing is had. Let that sink in. Yeah, sure. You can try growth hack all you want to get in front of them. But at the end of the day, they, the customer, holds the keys to your success. So instead of trying to rip something apart, find how can I optimize, keyword optimize, how can I optimize to get in front of more people, the right people. And not just any people, but the right people. So if your audience lives here, find a way that you can optimize to get in front of them. Because they're not on Facebook or Twitter paying attention. They're not paying attention on those other platforms. You have the data to prove that. You also have the data to see who's viewing your content here. Objection number two, check. Number three, no outgoing links. Wrong. This is how easy it is to get people to go to your website. Watch. Create custom URLs that have Snapchat within the URL and drop that here on the screen. So while someone can't necessarily click out from the snap, you can have a call to action within the snap and then measure clicks to your website because of that snap. Try. Next, speak to your audience. Have them send you a direct message because you know what? If you send someone a direct message within that DM, you can drop in a link. So if you are Coca-Cola that gets a high volume of inbound direct messages on Snapchat, here's what you do. No different than you have a community manager sitting behind a keyboard and a computer like this monitoring what people are saying and responding. You do the same thing on Snapchat. You buy them an iPad Pro along with a keyboard. So now they have a big screen. You load Snapchat onto it. And when they engage with content through DM, you engage back. So if you want to clickbait and get people DM you so then you can drop in a link in the DM, there you go. That solves your no clickable links in Snapchat. Check. Next, it's difficult to get new followers. I hear this all the time from a lot of people. No, it's not. Because this is not a numbers game. This is a qualified buyer's game. Big difference. You can use things like your other social media channels to cross promote and get those followers to add you on Snapchat. You can also use your email and CRM database and market to if you're a retail business, you can buy decals like this and you can put it on the door, on the entrance, on the menu. There's a lot of use cases that you can use to growth hack. Because again, let's face it, as marketers, we just want to do everything the fastest, most optimal way possible when it comes to growing, but not when it comes to engaging. Everyone's always in grow, 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 grow mode, but they're not looking to nurture. And this is the platform that you use to nurture. So what the hell do I even mean by that, Carlos? Well, it's very simple. You put out content, you reel people in, you engage with them back, and if they want to learn more about you, they know where to go. But shit, that's what you should probably be doing already everywhere else that you have a social presence. At least I would hope so, because people don't want to be sold to. So I think we've addressed that one. Check. Well, by the way, the author said waste of time. Those were his exact words. Something's only a waste of time if you are not seeing the value that you're getting out of what you're putting in. So I can't help you there, man. Lots of things are a waste of times. Hell, um, waking up in the morning can be a waste of time if you don't have a plan, if you don't have an actionable strategy on what you're doing. Next, short video recording duration. I got a question for you, Snapchat fam. Do you want to watch content 10 seconds at a time or do you want to sit and watch a movie? Most people are constantly on the go. They're multitasking. Their mobile device is the first, second, third screen. They want to be engaged in the shortest amount possible. Which is why I love Snapchat. Because it's Twitter meets YouTube all in one. You don't hate on Twitter, right? Because there's only 140 characters. So why you hate on Snap? Check. Next. Poor analytics per Snap. Hmm. Let's face it. This is a new platform. However, you can see account of who has seen your snaps, you can also see exactly who they are. Now, I want to know. 
does Twitter, does Facebook tell you how many people saw your content without paying for that insight? Now, let's not confuse something. They show you impressions. But impressions just means that your content happened to fall in someone's timeline or their newsfeed. It doesn't mean they actually saw it. So friends, I've debunked several myths here. It's up to you ultimately how you are going to use the platform and what you're going to get out of it. I can only teach and I can only hope that someone out there listens. So I appreciate if you've been following all along. I appreciate you listening and let me know how I can help. I am done with this rant. I've probably spent too much time ranting as opposed to helping. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time. Peace.